Thanks for that, Ken. <laughs> so, what is the real message of quantum physics? Oh my God, another talk in physics. I see people uh, running away. <laughs> 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 so, th thanks for staying. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, you will see. It's not that complicated. So I'm going to talk to you about science. And most of the, of the people think that science is about discovering an external absolute world. But I have a, a handful of minutes to convince you that science is not about that. It's much more, it's about human being. I will try to explain how this more subjective point of view arises from quantum physics, and this will maybe change your perspective on reality. So let's get more concrete. When someone throws a ball, we instinctively react by catching the ball with our hands. Our brain has been able to compute the ball trajectory in a fraction of a second. Does it mean that our brain knows the laws of physics? Well, as a first answer, I would, I would say no. I mean, kids, dogs, they all are able to catch a ball, but I doubt they have ever opened a book of physics. But well, in a certain uh, way, our brain does something very similar to physics. And let me explain what I mean. Our brain structure and development is partly due to our genetic and partly due to, to the many perception we have and the many stimuli that we receive all the time. So all, uh, all these perceptions are organized, ordered and catalogued through the formation and activity of our neural structure, enabling us to recognize recurring perception like the, sha the parabolic shape of flying object or to deduct uh, cause effect relationships. After observing A, I always observe B, so A is the cause of B, and so on. Then me and you, we start to talk. I explain, I explain you how I was able to catch the ball. You explain me your idea of a parabolic trajectory. So we are starting sharing our perceptions. And how do we collect and organize these shared perce perceptions? An idea? Well, science. Science and the brain, they do nearly the same thing, but at different levels. Our brain organizes this in the information uh, about an individual. Uh, science organizes the perception of the uh, shared by the whole humankind, or by a vast part of it. And how do we organize this huge amount of information? Well, <laughs> science is doing this amazing job through the use of uh, abstract and mathematical uh, models. So atoms, particles, uh, fields, uh, equation of motion, what do they represent? They all are elements of the abstract models that we use to organize our perceptions so let me challenge you. Do the atom really exist? Well, everybody will answer yes. But I prefer to think that matter behaves as if it was made of atoms. It's slightly different. What I'm saying that is that science is a, an elaboration of human perceptions. And uh, in, in the rest of the talk, <coughs> I will try to explain you how this more subjective point of view arises from quantum physics. So quantum physics allows to understand the world at atomic scale. Uh, mobile phones, computers, the projectors, the cameras, the, the diffusion of TED, according to some estimates, around 40% of human wealth is due to quantum physics. But what is really new in quantum physics? Well, let us consider a ball inside a box. And let us ideally divide the box into two sectors, left and right. Now the, bo the ball can, can bounce on the wall of the box, left and right. So the ball can be in four possible configurations. It can be in the left or right side, moving to the right. 
It can be in the left or right side, moving to the left, four configurations. Now the box, the box is closed, so you don't know anything about, about the ball. And the only thing you can say is that it's with probability 50% in the left side and pre uh, probability 50% in the right side. And the same probabilities count for the uh, directions. So this probability has are represented through these histograms. They are probability distributions describing our knowledge about the ball and uh, defining the likelihood to observe the ball in a certain configuration. Now we open the box. We see in which sector the ball is. It's in the left side. So we update our knowledge about the ball. And we go to observe the direction of the ball. It's going to the right side. We update our knowledge about uh, the ball. And now we know everything about the ball. In particular, we know its real configuration is the first one. And if we measure, if we observe the ball fast enough, we already know where the ball is, is uh, still in the left side, going to the left, uh, going to the right. And we can predict with uh, absolute certainty its uh, direction and position at any subsequent observation. Well, this is not possible anymore in the quantum world. Let's consider now an atom inside the box. And let us follow the same argumentation as for the, as for the ball. From total ignorance, we measure the direction. It's going, it's in the right, we measure the position, it's in the right side. Then we measure the direction, it's going to the left. So we update our knowledge, and we think to know everything about the atom. If we measure the atom f uh, quickly enough, what do you expect to find the, the atom? Right side. You are sure to find the atom in the right side. But well, in the quantum uh, world, you are not sure about that anymore. You could, in principle, find the, at the atom in the left side of the box. When you measure the direction, you lost all certainty about the position. And if you measure the position, you lost all certainty about the direction. Either you perfectly know the position or the direction. You cannot know both at the same time. And this is true also for the ball. But for big objects, this effect is too small to be noticed. OK, so we would like to, s to do the same thing we did for the ball. We would like to know the real configuration of the atom, but we can't. We only have access to these uh, probability distributions describing our knowledge about the atom and the likelihood to observe a certain position or direction. So. These probability distributions describe our knowledge of perceptions. They describe, they are an elaboration of our perception. So this already uh, confirms my point of view on science. Okay? And at this point, I would ask you, if we cannot access this real configuration, does it really exist? Well, we build the idea. We, we, in our normal life, we know that we can, in principle, determine all the, property, all the properties of an object. And we know that if we come back to observe the object, the object will still have the same properties, or they will be exactly as we were expecting them to be. Let's take an example, these telescopes. This telescope. You see its position. You see that it's at rest. You can touch it and feel its temperature. If you come back to observe this telescope, you already know what it's going to show you. Same position, still at rest, same temperature. So based on this experience, we build the idea of a reality uh, made of well-defined and objective entities. But in the quantum world, we never met this kind of entities. So we have to rethink our idea of, reali of reality. Now, what I told up to now could, could be already be enough to, to argue my point. But I would like to give you one more example in which this probability distribution are crucially important to avoid uh, misunderstandings. So books, movies, articles, 
Quantum physics is inspiring a lot of creativity, but re really often is misunderstood. One of the most misunderstood concepts is quantum entanglement. According to quantum physics, if two particles interact a certain while, they are entangled. It means that if you measure one of them, the state of the other change instantaneously, and even if they are far. Well, it seems to suggest the existence of a long distance instantaneous action between the particles. And this is, this is strange, because in physics, we know that anything and uh, nothing goes faster than light. A while ago, I read an article saying that based on this long distance instantaneous actions, uh, action, two lovers are connected forever. They will affect one another in what they feel and what they love and what they live, even if they break up or they are far apart. So it's very romantic. <laughs> and it's maybe true, but it's not what quantum entanglement, entanglement says. So what is the real meaning of quantum entanglement? And does this long distance instantaneous action really exist? Well, let us consider the two lovers again. Bob and Alice, they live in Paris, they live together, and we know how lovely it is to wake up together in the morning. <laughs> so we don't know what time they wake up, but we know that they wake up together. <coughs> so their behaviors are correlated. Now they travel, Bob goes to Rome, Alice to Barcelona. And I know that they keep the same habits, so the probability distribution remains the same. Now I met Alice in Barcelona, and I asked her what time she waked up in the morning. She answered before 9. So I updated my knowledge about Alice. But because of this lower correlation between Alice and Bob, I can also say that Bob wake up before 9. So by gaining an information in Barcelona, I was able to infer something about something happening in Rome. Okay, it seems to suggest the existence of a long distance section, uh, but it's not the case. Nothing goes faster than light, and the change was just in my knowledge that is here with me in a well localized place. So this example was to show you that in quantum physics we are working with these probability distributions and that everything is more clear and straightforward in terms of knowledge and information. Now let's go for the conclusion. Uh, what we see is that in quantum physics we can never access the real configuration of the objects. We only have access to these probability distributions that are describing our, know our subjective knowledge and the likelihood to observe a certain fact. So the first message is, we have to rethink the world, we have to rethink the idea of a reality as made of uh, objective, uh, absolute entities. And I think that this idea can be uh, extended to science in general. Uh, all the elements and concepts of theory in science, they do not represent the reality. They are abstract, tool, abstract tools that we use to organize our perceptions about what we, um, our information about what we observed and what we are going to observe. So only perceptions exist, and science, science is a, a way humans use to share and organize them. So thanks. Thank you very much for your attention.